Get ready for the next battle, ladies and gentlemen, they them to everyone else in between. My name is SPF Dark, and we're coming back at you live here at the CCA, bringing you our next match for tonight. Now, before we get a bit too started, and before I get too ahead of myself, I do have someone else joining me here today. Hello, 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 hello. We have we have trouble. We're about to make a double. Hello, <laughs> I am Vifu. Again, joined here with Dirk. As you guys know, we may or may not have had a double cast today, but we are glad <laughs> to come back today with CCA, bringing you guys, I believe that is Grisco's Workers Union versus Daybreak. Mm -hmm, most definitely. Mistaken. Yeah, it, it, it is Grizz Coast Workers Union versus Daybreak. Two teams. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two teams I'm... I'm very familiar familiar with. I know Fufu, you haven't been here at CCA for too long, so may not, I, there's not really too much to say because I think I was telling you before the show that uh, there are like some, uh, there has been like just like constant like um, cross rotation, so it's hard to say exactly what's gonna be same and what's gonna change. But I do know these two teams are very prominent and have been very prominent in the CCA so far. That is honestly, that just makes me all the more excited for this match because I mean you're hyping them up and I'm like okay okay we're, we're gonna get it started and if I'm not mistaken this is also division two correct mm -hmm. yeah so that honestly we like I <laughs> I I'm basically coming here with a clean slate but as far as I know what we do have to keep me outside of clean slate is we do have the prep cards that have been given to us that holds not only their keys to victory a couple stats and you know shows all all the stats we need for today here if. Uh, we want to take a peek at those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one I don't have, I forgot to actually bring that up, but if I can get <laughs> just one second, I, I knew, I was sitting here, like, trying to get everything prepared for, like, for me to, like, reference <laughs> and whatnot, and I was, you know, like, I was forgetting something, and once you said that, I realized what I forgot. But yes, no, uh, for, on Grisco Workers Union side, some few of the key, uh, key um, keys to victory for them is like for focusing on bombing out the, the, <laughs> the back lines. Um, I guess one of them has a, uh, those clashes they'll play the clashes game oh right because I, I remember now a bit a bit of a backstory kind of detail um uh daybreak uh they have a clash blaster so <laughs> do keep they had they're probably going to be keeping that clash blaster in mind of course so the blasters can be kind of menaces but the oh my god before we even touch anything i gotta shift to daybreak's key to victory because i need to you know i'll just list these out and see you guys read what i had to read Focusing on key players, playing together, being sexy. And you know, I admire, I admire the, whoa, pause. Before I even get into anything, I think we're actually getting into this. Pause, I, I got to yap a little too much. <laughs> Come on, hold on, we're going straight into this. Excuse me, I'm gonna take a peek at uh, their comms going on because you have some interesting stuff on the field. We are seeing that Clash Blaster that was talked about earlier as both of these, that, that's honestly interesting, as long with Bugas, but we're gonna see Mario here taking a very nice pick on their support, which is already a great way to get things started. Mm -hmm. Grisco is definitely having the opening advantage here as they're already pushing forward to try and keep the momentum going. Daybreak just holding the ground, keeping uh, stealth. Uh, that Clash Master just slowly sneaking by to see what exactly what they can bring, get, to, get going. But two go down for Daybreak already. Grisco has the man advantage right now. They're already looking to push forward and try and get that Clan Bastard open. Getting that clam basket open is all about the name of the game, and they are one clam away from getting that clam they need to do so. But Daybreak is pretty solid on getting that defense up and over. That Zuka taking it out! <laughs> that clam, that was a huge Zuka there from the side of Daybreak. With a minute into the game, no team has made their way, has made a clam into the basket yet. Mm -hmm. One thing that I really like about uh, I like about some of these CC games is that for Clamp specifically, it's what I like to call the five minute stall game. Nothing, no pushes happen for the entirety of the five minutes, and it literally sometimes boils down to overtime pressure. But we see that might not be the case as the crack and cheese comes in, bringing that clam to the power basket, already opening it to get some points on their side. Oh, if just unfortunately having to have that push stopped right then and there. Something on the board, especially with the possible stall that we were gonna have for a good chick of the game. Considering, I mean, those crack and cheeses are, you know, they're a little bit cheesy if you ask me, but it definitely worked in Daybreak's favor, at least to get something on the board to give them some sort of advantage, especially in the worst case scenario that we e actually end up in that five minute stall that you were talking about. <laughs> As well, definitely. With Daybreak now having 20 points on the board, they have the tempo right now to try, to try and install out um, Grizz co-workers to try and keep them at bay and not let them push up any further. And that might be working in their favor as two go down almost immediately from Grizz Co. Daybreak with Cooler Out, Specials Online. They're looking to try and get more points on their side, extend their lead even further with Tendermesso scattering them about. 
and it's doing so, but it didn't seem to quite leave a lasting effect as Grisco's worker union was able to swiftly recover themselves for that. But with their glucose going down, one of their aggressors is going to leave a window of opportunity for Daybreak if they can find it to try and find any holes in Grisco worker oh. union's defense here. But Grisco worker union is not... Oh, that's a handful. It's not letting up just yet as the mid is still covered practically in their turf. Yes, with Grisco, they have tactical or online and already in use. They're looking to try and use that to the most to their most advantage but right now it doesn't seem like we're giving them much value as they now have to push pop crab tank to try and keep them from going but no they're trying to push forward on that ramp but they the they break just too strong right now keeping that defense too high not allowing anyone get past that ramp i don't think Grisco has even stepped foot on that ramp if i remember correctly it doesn't why yeah, Daybreak is pretty solid in making sure that Grisco Worker Union is unable to break anywhere into their base. And with those fights happening, the Zap Ooh. actually taking the victory in that 1v1 being able to do so. Daybreak is very much holding on into that 80 point push that they have right now, just not even allowing Grisco Worker Union to even get that opportunity. One of their members already going down, but we are seeing one of them almost reach that ramp there from Grisco Worker Union. But again, Daybreak is not willing to let them break through their defenses here as they're just doing everything they can to prevent Grisco Worker Union from getting in. And they're continuing to do so successfully daybreak's defense just seems too hard right now for grisco to to try and break through they tried to attempt just a few seconds ago to, to flank around their bats but that was shut down almost immediately oh. with azuka getting punished really heavily kraken's out they have a power they don't have a power clamp that's a, gonna be a felt push most likely as grisco managed to get some of their other member uh, uh, other members of the team to get <laughs> delayed jump but that's not worth it that's two down you have a minute left this could be dangerous for daybreak yeah they definitely played a risky game there what happened was azuka actually took out their power clam there and with their anchor going out on top of that those Googles coming in to cause a bit of mayhem getting crushed there by the flings that just narrowly avoiding the zuka from the shot on uh Grisco worker union that was an insane honestly that was a really good cover there <laughs> they were up and out of the way right then there these uh, Grisco Worker Union, uh, I believe, almost has a clam ready to go, but they at least have their pity here as we're approaching those last 30 seconds of the game. But they really do have to get that power clam in if they want this lead, and Daybreak it seems to be having a solid defense as it stands. Mm -hmm. Grisco definitely had a solid opening to try and get uh, some points on the name before overtime hits, but they just were acting too slow, allowing Daybreak to regroup and re recharge their specials to, to get that push back on the ready as we head to 10 seconds remaining specials are being popped trades are being blown back to back it is gonna be a, a buzzer beater right now as the Briscoe's rushing in trying to get get it at power time and they managed to get an additional clan taking the lead out down in overtime over is incredibly powerful and Grisco Worker Union just put all their resources that Zuka from the right stack just um to chain into the chain into the crowd was huge and just providing them an extra amount of space giving them that last opportunity that they needed to get the win and honestly and a really good strategy they're doing it in overtime making sure that Daybreak does definitely does not get another opportunity during this match alone and honestly they executed it really well especially with uh, this stall fest that the game was in general sense Mm -hmm. Grisco definitely played their cards right to the very last moment, just making sure to keep their cool and not panic. And it paid off with that final push, which I genuinely thought it was done then and there. Once one of the power clams went down, along with as soon as the, the basket opened, it looked like it was done for. And Daybreak might have relaxed just a little bit too much at that point, allowing that, just, that last minute clam to get in there. Yeah, and it definitely, it just worked. That was like the stars aligned there, right then there for Grisco's Worker Union. And, you know, they were not playing around. It's like, if, if you know, if we're going to make a chance and it's going to happen now, well, we're going to make it now. Um, it seems like they're mental, as they said in their keys to victory. <laughs> we paid for seven games. We're going to use them all if we need be. And, you know, they really didn't give up until the end on that game. And it definitely shows that, you know, they have that strength in mind. And most definitely, we're gonna see exactly how that's gonna apply on our next our next game of the set. Splat zones on Umami Ruins. Now, me and Fufu had a bit of a <laughs> a bit of a game earlier yeah. today. Me and Fufu were on HP Heroes. Uh, not to get a bit, a bit too off topic from CCA, but we're on HP Heroes, and one of the games was Umami on Zone. So, seeing how that played out earlier, there's definitely a bit of a history of just trying to play around those two zones, which are very integral. Since they are split, you gotta be sure you know where your enemies are. That way, you just aren't constantly just painting over each other and just going back and forth and back and forth and never getting any lead off of it. 
Yeah, because it can get it can get really silly and can get really stally. Because uh, but the thing is, Omami can also lead to some really close games because it can take one stall from a zone to suddenly you know flip the tide. So it really is. You still have to be incredibly careful on this map. Two zone maps are like both. They could be incredibly beneficial, but at the same time, incredibly risky. Very you know risky maps. But I I think that's just the um the, the charm of a map such as Umami. So I'm excited to see how these teams are gonna you know are gonna duke it out. I. Honestly, I really don't know how it's going to go because we saw the stall that it can be during time. So when you move to something like um, zones, it really can be anyone's game. Mm, yeah, most definitely. I'm I'm interested to see like weapon what we weapons get picked and what weapons get swapped out because I, I really like seeing Clash Blaster in these types of settings because it's definitely a, a weapon that has a lot of contention to it on whether or not it should be played or it has any compatible viability to it. But if you enjoy playing the game and it, if, if it works out, why not rock with it? You know? Why and, not? <laughs> and and it's a thing that Gris Coworkers teams are very much aware of and they're very much trying to keep in mind around how they play and to be able to play around a weapon that isn't like you know as how do you put it isn't as popular in a meta like we have now where we're usually seeing those pencils those shots it's very interesting too because i think it can also provide some sort of advantage because it's very easy to underestimate a weapon that you're not used to seeing and i think class is going to be like a hidden weapon that they can almost use to you know throw hands with this but also considering the notes that we heard it seems that this is their first rodeo with the clash blaster which also makes it incredibly interesting Mm -hmm. One thing I really do love about CCA is the fact that meta isn't really, it's kind of just generally applied here. There hasn't been a team that, that's been, or consistent teams that, that's, that's just stuck to meta at a hard state. You always see like a, just a wide variety of weapons here and I absolutely love for it. And as I'm saying that, we see Gluga Doolies, we see Stringer, we see Range Blaster and Flingza. Very much weapons you don't see in a normal, normal competitive setting and these players make it work because it is just, a different environment all around and already these teams are off playing the neutral state trying to get any sort of advantage whatsoever as strikes not strikes tender missiles go out just scatter them and it's gonna go to daybreak with the first lead yeah, a first lane is going to be really good here. This is an incredible opening here for Daybreak, actually ultimately leading down to three down on Grisco's Worker Union, which is really, like, honestly, this is the opener of all time and honestly the most, you know, convenient they can have here on Daybreak, immediately forcing Grisco Worker Union into a defensive position, but Grisco Worker Union managing to take out their, uh, their, their flink that here, which honestly removes the threat of missiles and going in and taking out their shot on top of that, forcing the blaster and the stringer alone here for a bit as the rest of their members are trying to come in and provide a little bit of support here actually ultimately punishing that carbon on top of that mm -hmm. Baybreak on the back pedal right now it's now grisco's uh, turn to try and contest the zone and stall them out for as long as they can but one order goes down the shot going down by daybreak they're looking to try and get another and they get another daybreak pushing the gas as they keep pushing forward forward the trade goes out there's just one for grisco left and they just just like that they manage to flip it and take zone once again they are not playing around when it comes to the zone here, being able to just capture both of these zones nice and swiftly, taking out multiple members of Grisco's worker union. Just incredible job there from Daybreak as, you know, we, of course, we still have a good amount of chunks here at, left to go. And with this crab actually ready for Mortis, this actually might be a really good opportunity to turn things around once that gets on the field. Seeing that Booyah Bomb almost as a calling call to try and take down members of Daybreak, taking two Ooh. death. Right now, the zone, one of the zones already turning yellow. It's just a mount for the other one, but this blaster might try to stall things out, but it doesn't stop Crystal Worker Union here from getting that zone and applying those 34 penalty points onto Dave. Ooh, Pierce Co Worker Union is having a, a holding the advantage just for the time being. As Zuka comes out, try and get the pick, but no, gets shut down. There's a trade for each team. Both teams are just struggling to try and get any sort of momentum going in their favor at this moment. At daybreak, they have two down. Gris Co Workers seems to go on the back pedal as 10 missiles go out. They're looking to try and paint up once again the zone to try and get the zone back into their, in, into their favor. As <laughs> I'm struggling with words right now. <laughs> of words of all time you know here in the comments said anything goes we're here for the vibes anyways but daybreak is able to get a little bit more cap on the zone just they're slowly trying to get down those penalty points just please do what they can to try and move out the other roller this is roller for roller warfare but the card does get taken out there on the side of crystal worker union and they're actually at a number six with two down daybreak you know despite their backline being the only one going down you know they're still able to hold the zone nice and steady as these penalty points are slowly taking their way down going down to four here and members of crystal worker union are still continuing to drop here unfortunately losing the glugas as they are starting to succumb to the pressure of daybreak just a bit actually i've lied that zone is contested pause 
<laughs> most definitely grid score workers are putting in the work right now to try and make sure daybreak just doesn't keep running away with and with the points they have right now going for a cheeky flank to try and get a pick both teams are <laughs> just are caught into a scramble right now as good score worker unions manage to flip both zones taking the lead not the lead taking the zone back into their into their favor and slowly taking away at their penalty points keeping daybreak just pushing them back further and further with any sort of resources and tool they have and two specials online for for Grisco, they're looking to pop those to try to keep the momentum going into their favor. Honestly, just the, the more they can keep this in their favor, the better, as they have no penalty points left to go through. The stringers already setting themselves off on the dome, trying to put a, part, a bit more pressure onto members of Grisco Worker Union. Actually, successfully taking one down, starting with their splash here, but that is going to lead to two down and daybreak. Make that <sighs> no, they have to steal as one of you know, <laughs> the, as one of their own also goes down with. But it doesn't stop the fact that these points <sighs> are still continue to drop down, and they are super close to approaching the three. But this Blinza coming into contest one of the zones, stopping the count right now, and these Yuka's. It is a bloodshed out on the field right now. Both teams are just struggling right now to try and flip it into their equipment in their name. And Daybreak managed to flip it into their favor. Just cutting Grisco Workers Union off from their lead. Three point difference between the two teams right now. 40 seconds remaining. This is looking to be a terrible situation for Grisco as they're just keep getting pushed back further and further and not allowing any entryway, any sideline, any position onto mid. But it looks like with two picks going, it might just flip back into their favor as both teams are just fighting once again over mid. Let's gonna definitely keep going here as we only have 20 seconds left on the clock and Daybreak is able to have a current lead right now. Just doing what they can to hold that, especially with these penalty points out of the way. They might even be trying to go for a straight knockout, but Crystal Worker Union has to go just about now if they want this lead with only 10 seconds left on the counter and this counter ticking down and might even threaten a knockout before this timer is even done and threaten the knockout. And is that is Wait, is it gonna catch? Dude, dude! Oh! Oh, it was right there. That was like a smidge away. <laughs> oh! Gris co worker unions barely just missed the marker to try and stay in this game at least for a little bit longer. Not being able to flip the second point into their name, causing Daybreak to take this game, tying up the score one to one. It's like they, these teams kind of like played a little bit on the safer side until around that last minute where it's all in and it definitely shows here with just the bloodshed that was happening they were really at each other's throats there by that last like 30 seconds it was like all or nothing the zone just nearly almost capping for uh gristle worker union but just daybreak being able to just stall it just enough as the game was ending they even threatened a knockout like very close one to the timer at that as well mm -hmm. yeah no the, the wind condition right there for that last like few seconds was to allow, was for Daybreak to just keep one zone occupied. It didn't matter if they if Grisco got the second zone because if overtime was called and night and Grisco didn't have both zones capped into their into their favor, that that would have been it. The game would was was to go to Daybreak and it did go to Daybreak. They just had to focus on the one zone and I just want to say that I think that was a very smart play just to keep one side focused and while letting uh, Grisco contest the other one because as long as they had one, they they have game. Yeah, it really, that's the, that's also another, like, risk on uh, Splat Zones. It really is. You can cheek out, like, the, uh, hello, little buddy. You can really cheek <laughs> out <laughs> uh, winning the zones. It's just, it really is, you know, as long as it's not capped, it's ours. And they took complete advantage of that, which is really impressive. I was like, yeah, so Scar was like, hold <laughs> on. I was like, the score, I was like, wait, I forgot how close game one was. I was like, hold mm -hmm. on. Hold on. I thought yeah. I was going to break out for a second. I was like... Mm -hmm. yeah, no, both, both of these games so far, I've literally been buzzer beater uh, just game calls because the first game, it was a overtime win from uh, Grisco. And on the second game, a uh, second game, we just witnessed Daybreak just barely managed to just sort of deny um, Grisco from getting to the point. And here in game three, we're about to see exactly what they're going to be trying to do this time around as we head into Tower Patrol on Mako Mart. Macomart, my absolute beloved. Honestly, as we all know, Macomart is, you know, a map that comp players, uh, you know, arguably every comp player loves. And, you know, just with the staple it is, I've mentioned it so many times before mm -hmm. that it, it's just a well-rounded map to truly test um, the all-around elements of a team. And I think this is like a great um, map mode to, you know, always play in any map list. Mm -hmm. I will say I'm, I'm I would I I will bet money that Daybreak will bring a a blaster of some kind here because there is legends to play around. Blaster is just a menace for 
poking the tower and keeping people away from tower. It's just a very good all around, uh, on paper anyways, a just a good uh, blaster favorite uh, scenario here. And I would be very shocked if we don't see it. You are you are counting on this blaster almost. You are willing to bet money. I can bet you. Well, maybe we'll see it. I love seeing the carbon pick though. I think that on this map it's gonna be really nice. No blaster. Dark. Give me about? hundred. No. Class Wait, blaster. Wait, Oh my, I'm, I'm blind. I'm currently blind. Hold on, I should probably get my glasses on, y'all. They're on. They're on, and I'm, I am still can't see. But honestly, I think, you know, as they're opening up, I want to mention that Mortis is actually building up a crab already, which is, I think this is just this strategy. We're going back to the early days of Splatoon meta, just using that to make a bunch of space for their team, but unfortunately, the good oh! oh! What a dunk! The splat bomb from that auto shot shut down that and the tables were immediately flipped. Are you kidding me? That was like, that was like target locked on. <laughs> <laughs> Already, Grizz co-workers seem to have a relatively solid opening with having crap take at the ready. Just lost first checkpoint immediately within the first minute. And even though Daybreak is already on the back panel right now, it's not going to be that difficult to come back from as there's as Grisco is still in mid. There's no one on running tower right now. It's just a slow push they're getting right now, giving them time they need to recuperate and just deny day uh, deny Grisco from getting any more points. I mentioned this Carmen just took two out with their Zuka, just giving the, uh, their team extra time to, you know, try to make way here. And seeing another Zuka up and ready, but uh, yeah, that Stringer is doing a really good job, te ugh, job contesting the tower right now, using its explosions to just stall anyone from getting on the tower in general, which I think is really handy, preventing the Grisco from oh. passing the score just by one point. Oh, what happened right there was Grisco broke checkpoint, they broke, broke checkpoint, and they did not push the, the, the tower any further than that. And But because they break got it, got it first, they are technically now in the lead right now. But just as I say that, two go down for Dibrit, two are down for Grisco. It's an even blow for blow right now. Both teams are just trying to see what, exactly how they can keep momentum going in the favor. And what, what a pushback from the Zuka! coming out to play and you know zuka for zuka kill for kill these strikes are also just going to come out and try to get anyone off that tower right now daybreak is trying to prevent Grizzly from getting any more points on the board and doing so successfully they actually take two down off of them on top of that that tower is now returning to its cozy spot in center as you know the fighting of these strikes honestly i'm looking at the stringer and this stringer has been doing an incredible job just spacing out a lot for daybreak but daybreak really does have to get another push up and out of the way if they you know if you know, we want to see that lead happen and that lead, you know, change hands for a bit. But our specials are starting to come online. And I hope to see some sort of momentum happening, which it seems it's starting to get on the field. Oh, and there's also know, there. Yeah, no, a six point lead isn't that much by these game standards. It could easily flip one way or the other still with how the, these teams have been playing out. And as specials keep getting on, keep going online and being used as they are getting uh, ready. Both teams are just trying to maintain any sort of momentum or any semblance of momentum that they can. But it looks like Grisco is going to be the one to flip it and keep it going into their favor as they're pushing Daybreak back slowly, one by one, pick by pick, a duel by the Stringer. Manage to get the pick before they jump out! Stringer's not playing any games, dude. They are not playing games. They're here for for blood and blood only. Let's go uh, Workers Union being able to still have this lead here. It's like I said, it's a six point lead. And even though it's not much, it seems to be doing much in a situation where these teams are much more closely uh, related in skill. So they really do have to get a really good push in order. Well, they break this here in order to meet that lead. There's a minute 30 left. So there is definitely still time to do so. But both of these teams are just fighting to keep themselves alive as uh, Grisco is getting that tower moving again. This is Grisco's chance to try and extend the lead by as much as they can as there's a very big contention on tower right now. That roller is doing a work to just deny Grisco from any space, any territory, and any creeping up onto their side of the map. As we get into the final minute of this game, Daybreak is looking to try and keep pushing Grisco workers back further and further. But Grisco has all specials online. They're just waiting for the right opportunity to try and begin popping them. Yeah, just any more points on the board. Oh! Okay, snazzy kill. Oh, just a barely missed roller for roller attack. I call that friendly fire if you even, if you even want to say. <laughs> These rollers are fighting for their life here. We're honestly, this tower is still sitting cozy in mid day. We gotta get on this, gotta get those points rolling. We want to try and meet a pass that score that uh, Grisco's has set for 
but you're just putting that pressure, seeing that bubble up on the field is definitely gonna help a lot, but that crab is ready to cause a little bit of mayhem there, as we might be seeing in just a sec. And that he just swaps, barely! Just Daybreak being able to push that past two points. And no, we're still going, but they, they're ready to keep the party rolling. Let's get it going. Party Rock is in the house tonight, baby, let's go! <laughs> They're still going and pushing it further, just extending their lead by such a large margin. Grisco workers have a lot more work to try and be put, cut up for them, but it might not, not even be enough as they bring out the strikes. They contest the tower, and Daybreak takes game number three. Daybreak is not messing around, taking that. I just said taking that. I think that it's that line. I'm saying, I've been telling you, it's that last <laughs> minute of the game that really brings all out on these teams. They, they, they don't play around. Oh, goodness. Mm -hmm. Like, the second, it's a lock in. That's when they start leaning in, in their chairs and stuff, bro. The gamer leans. Mm -hmm. I, 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 got, I have to give props to this player right here with that very well thrown slap bomb just taking out that crap immediately. <laughs> that, you, it, you can't get any better than that, man. Like, how are you going to do that? I, if that was me playing, I peaked right then and there. <laughs> It's like, this is it. I, I have highlighted my career. I need that clip sent to me, like, through five different, like, methods. I do not care. That That is a good spot bomb. Honestly, an incredibly satisfying spot bomb, if you ask me. Because mm -hmm. not only that, that was basically the third player that was down in that moment, too, which was mm -hmm. really good. But it, it was at the end here, as we're seeing those last 20 seconds of the match pop up, that where Daybreak was just able to, you know, push us through all the way down to 42 and still holding that tower strong with those strikes, just stopping any force that a grisco workers union was trying to put mm -hmm. yeah no that that hold on for um the, those tri strikes was very very smart for it from daybreak to at least get a checkmate scenario for them and they but like you said earlier a lot of these all, not a lot of these all of these games have come down to just the final minute just <laughs> almost like a turn for like a system here where nothing really matters until the last minute of the game where all chaos just ensues and it's just up to you on whether or not you can try and carry your team over the victory line over these last few moments and right now as we're heading into game number four we will be heading into clam blitz not clam blitz um <laughs> rainmaker on humpback pump track who for all back to rainmaker honestly rainmaker humpback contract is of course one of those map modes that i say every single time your feet are never on the ground but dark i, I'm a, I can you do me the biggest favor talk about humpback you know what i forgot i forgot my water bottle <laughs> take, take it back for a second will you? yeah no um the, the first thing i want to say about this map uh specifically is that it is literally a uh, bucket or blaster heaven if you play any of those weapons, you'll be very comfortable here with all the ledges, all the corner, all the ver verticality that you can get on this map. It's such good, it's such a good uh, um, terrain for you to just to mess around with. So I will fully believe that we'll, we'll keep on seeing the class master. We'll keep, we might see a bucket or two come out. Um, and both of these teams have, are just, might just sort of, oh no, there is a carbon roller on one side, and but there is the, there is the Clash Master returning on, on Daybreak. There's a there's a carpet on each side, actually. No. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 God. <laughs> oh, we are also seeing, interestingly enough, a splatter color screen open up on uh, on the side of Daybreak as well, which is going to be interesting. Pushing into that checkpoint, I think, is going to be incredibly helpful. But what I love to Ooh. see is the carpets on each side, which is going to be really great for the sharking game and just trying, you know, especially with all these... Um, all these curves on this map, I think it's gonna just gonna be a playground absolutely here. But Daybreak is already making their way to the checkpoint with this Rainmaker, not wasting any time. Look at that. Ooh, oh, and just a sort of breakaway attempt. Daybreak almost manages to get that first checkpoint broken, but they were stopping they were stopped before any major damage could be take could be done. That first checkpoint still standing. It is now Grisco Worker Union already pushing up, keeping Daybreak pushed back to try and get their their own checkpoint broken you know it's gonna be one for one as they are just trying to get this checkpoint in as you said it really is just one major choke point and they might just be almost doing it that will threatening the checkpoint once more and defending it successfully that is now two three down on daybreak leaving only the carbon alone but it seems like they are you know they're just trying to do what they can it's not gonna be enough here especially as one lone squid against three but they're gonna try and do what they can here unfortunately they're not finding anything this rainmaker does need to pop once more to oh. get some more points in the party. Oh, with a, with a very, 
Kyrie just estranged from Zuka Shaw. The entire momentum has just utterly been shifted. Daybreak needs what I like to call an absolute knockout to try and win this game because to get, in order to get that point, to get to to get to the even points with Grisco, they might as well be able to have the opportunity to get a knockout. With three minutes remaining, it's certainly possible, but they have a long uphill battle to climb right now. Honestly, yeah, no, and that checkpoint just needs to be broken here from Daybreak to try and meet what Grisco has put down, honestly. And they might just be getting that checkpoint right into, like you said, they really do have to push this pretty far. Any numbers that is closer to that knockout is going to be really beneficial. It's, but on a map like this, really anything can happen. So, but that, as we see, that Rainmaker unfortunately getting picked up there on top of that. I don't think Grisco workers is going to be, you know, pretty lenient on trying to let Daybreak oh. get any more points on the board. Oh. We, they, got, they had to be aware of who's, who their players are, oh, because just like that, the common roller comes in from mine, causing utter chaos. They managed to get a pick, but it might be just enough distraction enough to get the daybreak oh. off tempo. And just like that, they tried to for the breakaway, but no, they stopped. There is a four point difference between these teams. Just barely, and the way they got being pulled from the ink line. That squeeze are absolutely pulling weight, taking two members down off Grisco's worker union. They're just doing everything they can to prevent them from, you know, getting anywhere near that Rainmaker. Just trying to keep that Rainmaker in place. That'll be so much more beneficial towards them. Even down to putting that screen, that Carbon trying to come in mid, trying to take anyone out that they can. Not able to do so, but that Rainmaker has dropped left, being in an inconvenient position for Daybreak, especially as they're trying to push in. Oh, but I thought that Zuka not quite finding anyone either. There, that Rainmaker also popping in blue. We're just waiting for members of Daybreak to get that going as they continue to pick off uh, Grisco's worker union. One thing I do want to point out is that they can absolutely go over the left route to try and get points faster. And it looks like that might be exactly what they're doing as they take the left route. They've, they've been spotted and they might be haunted here. It's going to be up to Nazuka to try and sell out as much as they can. And then this might, and there's two down for a train. This could be Daybreak's opportunity to get the points into their favor. Come on, this is, it's like, it's really, it's a really tough thing here. But you see that Clash Buster on the ledge is trying to take members out, unfortunately taking their teammates jump here. That is a really risky position to be in, especially with that Rainmaker so close to being popped. And unfortunately, it does not go in their favor. This Rainmaker popped in yellow and it is stuck in Grisco's base here. So that I'm assuming they're willing to defend it here until it either resets or until they have to grab it themselves. Daybreak has a minute to try and grab this lead and Grisco is willing to stall this out if they need to to keep that point in their favor. Both teams are re resetting back to a neutral position. Wisco has two down. They are barely coming back right now. And it is now <laughs> Daybreak are looking to try and extend that lead as much as they can. The left uh, left side of this map seems to be hot contention. So they have to make a split decision split decision uh, to sort of try to decide which route they're gonna take and it looks like both sides are in contention right now as just like that Daybreak gets shut down with a wipeout. Grisco just need to stall this up for 30 seconds. Gris Optimal position, like you said, with only so much on the timer that they're in the best position they could possibly be. Having a wipeout to set themselves up in center to give themselves a wall of defense. This is not a spot where you want to make a, a mistake for either team, honestly. <laughs> Seeing the Zuka come out, fans are trying to find any picks that they can, forcing the trigger to drop in an oh. unoptimal position. But it's going to be one of the members of Grisco's worker unit that goes down here, and the Rainmaker stopped by oh. Grisco, and that is going to end the game. Oh. Oh. Daybreak, they tried to get to take the Rainmaker out from under their noses to try and save this game into an overtime scenario. But Grisco worker unit, their last player standing in mid, just managed to get the trade out, which luckily will end the game into the favor, taking taking this set, this taking this game and bringing the set to a 2-2 scenario. They are not playing around. They're trying to keep the score as even as possible or give themselves any sort of advantage. Both of these teams are very much adequate on winning this entire set, going neck to neck. And we're seeing those one minute, like those the, the energy that we were seeing at the last minute of our first three games now being shown throughout the whole thing here or something like this. And I'm hoping this momentum is kept up throughout the set because this is honest. This is going to be a real entertaining, especially with just how close and skilled these teams really are when you think about it. Most definitely, Grisco workers are definitely, as they said when one of their keys to victory, they're planning to play the long haul, play as much of their time as they can to try and just find that last minute mistake by Daybreak to try and abuse that and get the victory from right under their noses while Daybreak. They definitely have the coordination and just the just the cons consistent pressure to keep on going, to keep uh, Grisco worker union pushed back further and further. So it's really going to just be a test of stamina at this point to see which one can outlast the other. 
because so many times, so many times these in this set, these games have been just brought to a last minute decision, just brought back by either overtime or just right when the timer goes down to zero. That too, not only is it a game of stamina, it's a game of adaption because it really is whichever team can adapt to the other strategy faster is going to be coming out on top. So I think that's another thing. If you can sniff out your opponent's weaknesses, it's going to prove incredibly beneficial. And I think that's what's interesting about the, instead of the traditional best of three, best of five that we'd be seeing um, in something like tournaments, you have best of sevens here that really prove the adaption that these teams can make, um, even if it's throughout a longer scenario, which is why things like reverse sweeps can happen. But honestly, regardless, I do believe these teams are really close in skill and they're just finding, they're adapting to each other even as key being the score as close as can be. Mm -hmm. I want to see exactly how these teams would be adapting to each other as we head on to our next map mode on Clamplets on Museum Dolphoncino, which is a very, a very point of contention map mode, I'd like to think, for, for Museum. Museum Clamplets, I think, is one of its best modes, arguably, that, that is on that. Um, because, come on. <laughs> hey, listen, listen, listen. I also really like this map because, um... I may or may not be a Charger player, so <laughs> uh, but it is a very it's a very open map in its center, and it really does provide a lot of open space, which is um, we are seeing Zuka's, we are seeing that stringer out on the field, which is going to be incredibly beneficial for those um, for both the specials and the weapon. One thing I do want to like note that I just, I'm just like realizing now that neither team I've been using has been using tactical or that much from what i remember i'm pretty sure one team had a end zap but i forget which team and even then i remember seeing tactical being too much of a swaying motion so depending how they can use that to their advantage it can very well easily just be used to sort of to rush in and get the clams in and then just as you're getting picked off with tactical still active you just come back in and you're already ready to contest mid by the time the rest of the team are the other team is just trying to reclaim turf and trying to push back on to mid Auto options you can do here well only so many because in reality you have one to two routes you can take on a map like this so it really just becomes it really becomes a brute force at some point with things like this either that or you can crack and cheese it but i guess that is also a form of brute force but we are seeing uh, actually a cooler come out from grisco's worker you know on both teams uh, but we are still seeing that staple clash blaster and cleans a roller from daybreak Mm -hmm. And one thing I do want to know, a new weapon out in this lineup from Daybreak is the Deco, uh, the Heavy Deco, which I I don't think I see too much use out, out of these days. It's usually people prefer the, the Vanilla Heavy, uh, Heavy uh, Spatling. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, oh, yeah you, you're right. I forget, I forget, there's so many weapons, I forget what weapon has what. I forgot that weapon had a crack. Never mind, it makes sense. Dude, I take back everything I say. <laughs> My bro's like, hold on, I, I see the stride, I see the stride. It's that Kraken stride, if you ask me. And, and honestly, that Kraken's up and ready with this blood shit on one for one on each side right now having one down and they were going an extra down here their zap unfortunately going down right then there each team building up the clan economy but grisco is definitely in that advantage of being one away from power climb there's that power climb speaking of the devil and but they are ready to just jump this poor guy using the sickle to try and just get away in that bomb finishing off the blue goes right then there most definitely both teams are just playing a slow and steady game right now just trying to pace themselves as they try and take control of mid as best as they can specials are being used uh surf is being inked as these, these teams are just are very play are very very well uh, playing just a, a a sort of a slow and steady game but as cracking comes out being ready to use to try and push him forward just <laughs> to go down for daybreak unfortunately causing that push to just immediately be stopped and bay and switch into grisco's favor as they're already once again two down and they're looking to try and get some points onto their onto their side points at this point would be really beneficial for either side but we are seeing grisco's worker union preparing themselves even more as they have three power clamps up and ready to go and uh, but unfortunately neither team has any specials for defense or offense so it really is just a little bit of a wait here to either find an opportunity which they tried to find going for a trade instead and those missiles coming out to move grizzly worker union out successfully from the base of daybreak daybreak now finding this opportunity to just clear out their plat if they can but it seems like grizzly's worker union is not is not you know willing to move just yet still holding control of that center and taking down their anchor on top of that would provide a really good opportunity seeing that crab up and ready to go we might be seeing that pop in just a second with with the game pretty much halfway done already both teams are at a constant stalemate as well as 
as soon as one team gets an advantage, the other replies very strongly and just manages to deny the, that, that push that, that tries to get built up right there. Once again, you see, a trade goes out for both of these teams. And even though Grisco got the first pick and got the first momentum shift going to their favor, they make stood their ground and managed to keep keep Grisco off and away. And now it's their turn to, pu to push them back and go ahead and push forward onto their plan. I think tug of war with this thing because we literally don't have any scores just yet. Those retention missiles coming out from daybreak. Apparently, you're trying to be used to. The, oh, ooh, I believe trying to be used as a calling horn here to go to the teammates. But are they? Are they? They're throwing <laughs> double zookas out. I don't know if you saw, but that was <laughs> yeah. activated at once. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. These teams are. Uh, this is what I, I what I call the, the CCA special of just the the five minute stoppage where the game gets decided in overtime by just one single push. And it looks like Grisco might be the ones to just sort of break that theme as they're already onto their plan. Three power clams in their favor. Specials online are being used. They breaks on the back pedal. They slowly get flushed out further, and further back. This might be the opening that Grisco needs. Google's throwing hands, actually taking two down on Daybreak. This is now the opportunity that Grisco Working Union was able to take in. Even though they lost their third power climb, they were able to make the first two break in that five minute stall curse that you were talking about. Able to give themselves a pretty decent lead. It gives them a little bit of leeway if Daybreak was able to make a clam in, which is perfect. This is the opportunity, this is the spot that Grisco Working Union wants to be in that advantage state, but Daybreak is probably going to be a little bit more on edge as they do have to get these points in on the board in order to match that score. Most definitely, and if all else the, uh, if all else fails, they break. As long as they keep a power clamp on them, they can take this into overtime. But as Azuka goes out to deny that, that flings a roller. It looks like a cheeky flake into the back line. They managed to get a power climb in, but that's not what you want to do right now. As you're three players down, 45 seconds remaining. This is not looking good. Unfortunate there, a quick end to Daybreak's push was uh, just right then and there from one jump. Unfortunately, I think they died a little too soon before the rest of the clans were able to jump in. Daybreak now in, in a not so great situation at the end of the 30 seconds here. Uh, it, just Grisco Worker units doing everything they can to just keep them at bay, not allow them to get an opportunity. This is just as risky as it can be rewarding, especially with the timer being so close to being, you know, gone. But it seems that their, uh, their efforts are coming to fruition, seeing two down on Daybreak right now. Most definitely Grisco Worker Union is definitely hiring seeming to have the better, better tempo right now as we're counting down to the final seconds of this match. As long as Daybreak has one power clam, which I believe they do, they, this will have this will put them into overtime, which gives them about 30 seconds to not only clear out their Daybreak, not clear out Daybreak, clear out Grisco, get mid, and get pushed into the plan. That might be a useless though. Wait, the, wait. In. There's three power clams. This might be it. Three jumps in. That's one. That's two. That's it. That's not what you want to see. And a wipeout! That's unfortunate! As this game comes into Grisco Workers Union! Oh no! You're playing! You're with the one power club! Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> I felt that in my soul! <laughs> way to try and take this game right under take the rug right out under Grizz Co workers unions and they almost had it but I no I have no idea what happened there it could have been nerves it could have been almost any other possibility they missed the power clamp which caused them the game that oh. I know that hurt I know that hurt oh no, no. I, was it the spot they jumped in no. I think it was I think it was nerves. I think it was, it was nerves, nerves, dude. That that's freaking that's nerves. That's so unfortunate. Oh no. I think about this. Oh. Like, oh. Dude. I felt that in my soul. You got to be playing. Oh, I no. I <laughs> I daybreak. I can't even. Phenomenal players, but they just crap under pressure at the wrong moment but they're not out of it yet even though their Grisco worker union is at game point they still have they still have one more match to try and at least make a comeback on this to take it to game set on both sides as we're heading to splat zones and ship shape cargo oh, oh i love this map 
I love ship shape. I love me some split. I love me some ship shape cargo <laughs> code, bro. I love me some splat zones. You know, this is kind of my pookie map. This is my elite or like map. I'm you know, not gonna lie. Like, I got some bias. I, honestly, they. I'm. I'm considering. I'm always gonna be talking about backlines because I'm a backline girly. But honestly, with something like ship shape, I think uh, it can be really like really good to have if you can get your backline on the center, the the top center portions. You're set. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but most definitely. Um, there, the the big point of contention here is definitely going to be the the just how many grades they are, and depending on the weapons you pick, that might be an advantage and that might be a disadvantage. For something like a blaster, that's definitely going to be a, an advantage because you could just sit under those grates and just poke them for free, and and they're going to have to be struggling to try and figure out like where they're getting shot from, as well as being shot from other enemy players. And with this map mode specific, oh, I just got I just realized I got my uh, mask mixed up. I thought we were on crab leg, not sh ship shape. Ship shape doesn't have to many grades. Ignore what I just said. <laughs> Get hit with that, bro. Get hit with it. Get hit with it. <laughs> I, oh, goodness. I'm, I'm gonna be completely honest. I'm still recovering from that heartbreaking moment last game that I just completely oh. crossed the wires from these maps. <laughs> oh, just dog just oh. dog bro okay <laughs> okay this is new game game number six they're not out of this yet daybreak can bring this back and depending how well they bring, they play this they can take this to a game of seven which will which has to be their winning condition here yeah, you really do have to take it home, and it really can't go anyone's game. Again, I am betting on having both their flings at L or and or stringer on that top area because it's going to provide a lot of spacing. But that crab is going to have to say something about it, making its way to the top first. They're trying to get the bomb tactic, and we're seeing it. We're seeing it. We're seeing the attempts. Oh. And just like that, Grisco Worker Union managed to flip the zone back to their favor, pushing Daybreak back. But no! And I don't even. And Blink in the thing, you miss it! Three going down for Grisco! Daybreak has the advantage, and they're pushing forward to try and keep them off tempo! You can't, you gotta, you gotta get them off the groove there. And we see that Stringer going into that position that I mentioned, trying to get the top here, finding the shot face on, oh. and uh, living to tell the tale as well with the punish going out later. Getting that cleanup crew up and out of the way to get the, the, that shot up and out of the way. But up and out of the way twice, we're, we're going for double deals. But I think that they're it really set up in an optimal position to get as many points as you can on the board right now. One thing, for, the one thing's for certain. If you would have seen this match, you would not have known that they had made such a heartbreaking gameplay at that last second, at the last previous <laughs> game. They're playing very strong right now and keeping the momentum going in their favor. Twenty points remaining, even though two goes out. This is gonna be a hard uphill battle for Brisco to work from. But it may not even be an uphill battle as points are still counting down. There's ten points remaining and they're contesting zone, but they just managed to barely flip it in the nick of time. Yeah, just right there as they need it. But Daybreak is not ready to let that go just yet. Quickly retaliating, taking three members of Frisco Union, Frisco's Worker Union down all the way, being preparing themselves to get rid of those penalty points. I believe they're locking themselves in to really take this home if they can't see that whale pull out. And honestly, it's just they're setting themselves up and back in the optimal zone. But that's it! Oh, it's oh, using that double zuka! No. They're two for two! It is Zuka trade for trade! Both teams are at even numbers, but unfortunately, Daybreak has the less manpower right now to hold to a zone as Grisco Worker Unions, they have free reign to retake mid and try and set up their defense to hold them out, but no! It's just trade for trade! It is holding us now. They have zero penalty points to go through, unlike Daybreak right now, who is unfortunately has well, yeah, penalty points. That's how Spot 2 works, baby. But Daybreak is definitely on that defensive here right now. Crystal Burger, you need to do what they can to just take down the numbers of Daybreak. But it is going one for one. Just it's just a fight with these points. They're continuing to take down the Crystal Burger. You need to just going right down for it. These points are still going. Most definitely, Grisco and Workers Union definitely had to keep Daybreak off tempo and off the beaten path as they're doing a very fine job of distracting them and, and, and making them ignore the zone in favor of fighting for themselves. As we have 10 points remaining, this could be it. Daybreak needs to rush to zone to try and get big, but as one pick goes down, I think that just might be it! Got it! The game of the set going to Grisco's Worker Union! Yeah, oh, they, they turned they turn it right around. <laughs> I, oh. had, I had to bite my tongue from cursing. They turned it right around. 
just when you think that Daybreak has that 10 advantage, they were so close. Frisco and Wargo's just like, Uno reverse. Oh. Both teams did extraordinarily well today. Just keeping their aggression, their their plays was phenomenal. Both teams should be proud of what they've done today. But unfortunately, Grisco was the one to come out on top, taking this game and set 4-2. That was incredible. They, I, like, again, we're seeing that energy. We were slowly seeing that energy snowball up and out of the way here. And it just came down to this moment. This was like, this was a hold for hold kind of game. And honestly, just mad props there to both teams. But it, again, Crystal Worker Union just pushing that just as far as they can to that knockout, taking home this set. And I believe, though, despite that, I believe we are going to be playing that last game as well. Mm -hmm. a, a, a tradition here at CCA is to play the rest of the matches of the set. Now, these these game, this last game won't count for any points. It's more for the pride and, and the glory, but it, it's still a, a sort of sportsmanship kind of uh, deal between these teams to sort of just like just shake hands and be like, all right, let's have fun with this last one because even though they sub might be a little bit upset or are just disappointed with how they played, this could be a very good way to just sort of like decompress and just sort of reset after what might, what most likely was a very stressful game. Blame them. I mean, with a map like this, like it was a game like that. Like you were going, you're, you're literally going hold for hold. Like <laughs> <laughs> it, honestly, I, I hope this serves as a really nice cooldown match. I who I don't think cooldown match. I said, all right, let me shake you. Let me dap you up, bro. Like let me dap you mm -hmm. up. You know, like. Like, dab me up, Dark. Dab me up, bro. Like, come on, come on, come on, come on. Dab me up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for the, the dab up match, we're going to be heading over to Tower Control on Sturgeon Shipyard. I got beef with this map. I got beef with this map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Laugh all you want. Wah, wah, wah. Uh, it is... It is a, a skirmisher's heaven with all the little nooks and cran crannies that you can just kind of hide behind and just sort of go around and whatnot. Oh, I'm trying to bottle flip this. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that was a success. I don't think that was a success. <laughs> Oh. I, don't, I don't think so but surgeon shipyard honestly i got i look at i got it let's go i got beef with with this map in general i don't know it, it could be it could be really a high risk high reward for its backline but i don't know something about it feels cramped mm -hmm. but i still want to see how both of these teams are going to be able to perform on a map such as this mm -hmm. And, and one thing to know also with the, the, our tradition of playing all seven, there also tends to be just a, a very drastic comp change, and which we're already seeing right here on the side of Grisco. And they break. Yeah, yeah, that is a, a Firefin Charger. Or not Firefin, that's the old Charger. I am, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an old man in the community. <laughs> How's your back doing, bro? All right, listen, listen, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like uh, the the favor the comfort picks have come out on the field. I love seeing that ZF out on the field. But honestly, we're gonna be going back by the back line, which honestly we, we just we just gotta do sometime. You know, get, get, get a little get a little funky back here. But that tower is sitting pretty in mid with neither team having scored any points just yet. Uh, I was just waiting for the next member to go down. Uh, it's gonna be Daybreak that actually takes that first member down. Two down. There's go worker union running off that momentum. But that oh, oh unfortunately those blue was also meeting the demise. At the same time. Come on, tap that tower. Don't be shy. <laughs> Most definitely, both teams are still trying their absolute best to try and take this, even though a non-serious um, <laughs> game for their for their um, results, a very just high <laughs> high stakes for glory and just for the the fun of it. As as Gusko, even though they did have a bit of a lead right there, they only managed to push the tower up at just a few points. Still, both these teams are still going at it, trade for trade. They still <laughs> try and cannot make much of momentum off of each other. Because as one, as as soon as two goes down from one, uh, the, the other team managed to get a returning trade <laughs> almost immediately. Yeah, no, this is budget for budget. Neither team being able to push past 90 just yet, but it looks like Daybreak is going to try to get that, push that, uh, you know, make my Olympic statement a lie here as they push past that 90 point here, taking the lead on top of that, making their way to the first checkpoint. 
Mm -hmm. First checkpoint going to Daybreak's favor, most likely, as a dive attempt with a tower <laughs> ends up failing as the first checkpoint broke in. <laughs> One thing that is very common with this map mode is that that first checkpoint uh, kind of dictates the red tempo of the rest of the game. And with Daybreak, when they go into Daybreak, it's looking like this could be a very well a snowball scenario for Ooh. for them. But a snazzy ghost sneak up from that Luna Blaster might be trying to put things down, but unfortunately getting punished as well. Those Lugas big in, taking a pick, and it's going to be trade for Ray, leaving that tower unattended, except for that lonely, not so lonely anymore, a suction bomb on the tower, and it's still going to go. Uh, you're still going to be stopped by Grisco Workers Union. Oh, Grisco Workers just and just keeping their, their defense strong, even in this sort of dire situation. 22 points. That's a near knockout scenario in my book. And as one last stand from Grisco Workers' final member, uh, Daybreak is just seeming to just keep their keep the momentum going, keep their hold strong. But no! Just like that! They managed to clear out the rest of Daybreak with one final member! A uh, one member playing. Mario does not play. Is that Mario? Is that name Mario? Mm -hmm. Hey, looks like their name is Mario. Mario, don't play around. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is Mario indeed coming in. Lucas is that absolute menace in this household, but that roller is just going to take a tough tag team here to take him down on top of that with two members going down on Bristol Worker Union. And it's Luna Buster just trying to pick up where they can, trying to do what they can here. Getting their drink, you know, crack a cold one, let's get it. And that Clash Blaster coming in to just, it is really just, we're in that little, like, weird, like, middle stage where they're just trying to find something to capitalize off. And the Bristol Worker Union finding it, taking two of Daybreak out right now. Daybreak is looking to keep the month to put, keep Grisco pushed back as best as they can, but it looks like they're they're, just, they're not respect they're not not respecting they're not hence, just sort of falling to their plan as they, Daybreak keeps falling one by one. But no, Grisco workers gets another gets another two picked off from them. Daybreak is now looking to push tower and keep momentum and pressure going. <laughs> they are on the back pedal. A uh, triple one's lovely, uh, but they break a new, uh, honestly opting to try and keep that tower closer to the uh, Crisco workers spawn here. But Crisco's, you know, Crisco's little happy workers here are going to be going down to middle, but letting that tower ride along with them right now. With one minute rem remaining, Daybreak two players down. Grisco workers are looking to try and see exactly how th this last minute of the game's gonna go. A lot of these games decisions, well, all of these games decisions that have boiled down to the last minute. So really, this is where the real game starts. Exactly what mistakes are made and how these teams capitalize off of it will dictate who could potentially win this game. And even though Daybreak has a a very solid lead over Grisco, it gets Potentially very well still go in Grisco's favor, is, uh, depending on how they play their cards. They play their cards well, they are at the <laughs> stab, just goes in and cleans up mid. To be able to clean up, that is great. And there's Luna Blaster coming and taking picks, taking a trade on top of that. They are not playing around. Honestly, this Luna Blaster has been an absolute menace this entire game. But they, uh, Grisco's worker union still has yet to push past his 91. Daybreak just stopping them in the track just about every single time. And with three seconds left, Daybreak does have to tap this tower. Or alternatively, you can get into overtime here. But it's going to be stopped immediately by Jawbreaker coming and tapping that tower, sealing the game, allowing another game to go to Daybreak. Uh, and even though this last game does not count for the score uh, that's been finalized, Daybreak manages to take this final game, the the GG's we did well game, and and just keep their defense high from Grisco. But tell took this last match and going out with a lovely hurrah at the end. But Grisco's worker union, um, are still as we said before, still gonna be taking the set, um, regardless. But honestly, this has just been a very entertaining set, if anything, and game. Both teams absolutely fighting their hearts out, and we're honestly really close. I would love to see these two duke it out again in the future. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, depending on how, how the rest of the group stage goes, it's very well that these two teams could be the teams that make it out of groups, and we might see them later on in the season. But one thing to know as we're beginning to wrap up is that we had a Splatfest this weekend and it's beginning to wrap up here in just a minute. So if the wonderful voices in my head could, could switch the scene as soon as they can, we can see those results and see who ended up winning our, the, the Splatfest that happened over the weekend. Pick a chat. I'm saying there's spoilers, spoilers in there, but other than that, let's look at the results. Give us some results. Bada, 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 bada. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as, audio, as, audio, audio. <laughs> as we are, as we're, as we're vamping for time here in just a moment, I will say, Fufu, I didn't want to ask, Fufu, what team 
would you were you on this uh, Splatfest round? <laughs> I was on Team Drums, the spot fest. I, it was a lot of fun. I didn't get to really play much, but I did manage to take a hundred, a hundred X home. Luckily, it was, it was pretty nice. What about you? You were on Team Drums, right? Uh, no, I was on Team Guitars with myself. Honestly, pretty based. Honestly, all of the choices in spot fest were so good. It was honestly mm -hmm. kind of hard to choose. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely. I I am biased for guitar because I actually play, played a little bit of guitar back in high school, so that's why I gravitated toward that. But right now, we're going to see exactly where these points are going to be allocated from the the pre-show as well as the the remainder of the Splatfest event. Yes, yes. Bada, 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 bada. Drums taking the consoles. Yep, we saw that before. But I Oh! That's right! With this new update, there's also points to be given to second place! Exactly, we got we get that loveliness over here. Oh, ooh, okay, okay. thirty five percent going to guitar. Okay, okay. look at that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, I am just saying that. That is the what? It, that is numbers are funny, man. <laughs> oh, all right. And the next up is the clout wow. check from each of these teams. Okay. okay. What? Whoa. What just happened? Keyboard Good. sweep. That's Dang. what happened. That's a I wow. <laughs> Holy crap, dude. I'm I I don't, I don't remember a splat face having the the cloud results end up looking like that ever, I think. I think no, we've got it at least once before cuz see some crazy. Oh, they fill up differently. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was a, a, a landslide victory for Team Keyboard. Very much so indeed. Oh my goodness. That 500 to like not even 200 break for the other teams. Big Man mm. just munched on all the points, dude. Oh, and uh, good good for Big Man though. Uh, he he doesn't get a chance to win these laughs. So it, it's hard to tell oh, if it, it, <laughs> yeah right. Uh, it's 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 hard to tell if this victory was because of the new system or if this victory was bound to happen regardless. So I mean I, I know there's some people out there who actually like are looking at this this stuff and just sort of tracking it to see exactly how the points would have planned out. So maybe we'll see it on Twitter one day. I don't know. Dark. So for real, those three were in the big man's favor. That was big man's all the way. That was yeah. big man's all the way, bro. Yeah, most definitely. But yeah, with, with that final Splatfest result, I think we're going to be wrapping up here with that that wonderful set. So, uh, Fufu, Bestie, can't tell me where can they find you? You guys can find me and my sons <laughs> on Twitter.com. <laughs> on Twitter.com at, at SplatFufu. Or you guys can find me on Twitch at, at FufuPNG. So, you know, catch me there. We're getting that schedule figured out. You know, we got some arts and backline shenanigans, the good stuff. Dark, where can the lovely people find you? You can find me both at Twitter and Twitch at SPF underscore Dark, just how, like, how you see it on the Twitter handle below me. Um, I repost just a bunch of random nonsense from, from my thoughts and just some of the things that I like to see, as well, occasionally stream here and there. I'm a bit of a busy guy, but I do tr may try and make time for it from, from time to time. But yes, it's been a, an absolute pleasure to be here tonight and just casting that wonderful set. And with that being said, I think this is the last game for the set for the night. So if I'm not mistaken, we'll be heading offline here in just a bit. So yeah, all right, voice might keep from that. So with that last set, everyone have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and watch out for next week when this will pick up once again. And they're gonna have to try to make a move quickly here. Yes, they will.